Hey guys, welcome back. This week we're continuing on with the laundry renovation. Last time we finished up with the Rust-Oleum tile transformation kit, leaving us with some really nice white tiles. And as promised, here's some clips of removing the masking tape and just a little bit more detail on what those floors turned out like. These floors were completed about four or five months ago and since then it's seen some traffic and it's held up really, really well. There's really no signs of wear or any flaking or chipping or anything like that. It hasn't all been smooth sailing though. When we were peeling off some of the masking tape, the paint that was on the walls, which was probably from the 80s and quite old, just peeled off and flaked off in some big sections. This also happened the first time that I went to paint the walls. Basically the stickiness of the paint and the roller rolling over the old paint sort of caught and ripped out this massive patch of old paint off the walls and I was left with this big section of sort of chipped and, and loose paint that was all the way back to the render that was on top of the bricks. This picture shows the worst patch and in the next clip you'll see on the wall the massive patch of paint that it peeled off and basically all I had to do was just try to flatten in the edges with plaster and then once that had dried I could sand it and try to get it as flat as possible for painting. For my second attempt of at painting I decided I was also going to do a splashback so I had to remove the taps and the electrical fittings on the walls. I also took off some tiles that were up behind the sink. This time there was no problem with the painting and all the walls were painted white. Then I measured all my dimensions and went to Bunnings to buy the cupboards. I chose Bedford's HMR Solutions cabinets, HMR standing for high mold resistance and I bought a vertical cupboard, two wall mountable cupboards and one base cupboard. I chose to assemble these cabinets outside where there was plenty of space, they were just a little bit too big to be building inside of my little laundry and it all went together really well, the instructions were pretty good and there were no missing parts. The overall quality of these cabinets was pretty decent but I'll show you some close-up details at the end and a few little gripes that I've got. It would definitely help having a friend lift in the cupboard with you. It can be quite heavy when it's assembled. I think the tall one was around 50 kgs. And even though it was quite tight getting it through the laundry sliding door, we managed to get all the cupboards inside the laundry. The way I installed these cabinets was to use a normal drill bit to pre-drill some holes in the back of the cabinet. And then I could hold that cabinet up in place exactly where I wanted to install it on the wall and then use the same drill bit to drill just slightly through and mark on the wall where the holes need to be. Then we used an 8mm masonry drill bit and a hammer drill to drill out some holes in the brick. Then we could install the blue wall plugs. A couple times we doubled up on the blue plugs so that they were definitely tight in the wall and we used a chisel just to knock off any excess that was poking out of the wall. Then we could screw through the cupboards and into those blue plugs that were in the wall. And also we screwed the cupboards together in the bottom corners with some smaller screws that weren't going to poke through. This is a little trick to pack up between your cupboard spaces. What we're going to do is screw these two pieces together so that they stay level both at the top and the bottom. I'm using this 50 cent coin here to pack up the space. After a quick tidy up, we can have a look at how the cupboards look when they're installed, obviously without the doors on yet, which was the next part. The doors were easy enough to install, but this is probably one of my first gripes. The taller closet was really difficult to align the doors right, and even though I was able to get really good spacing on the other cupboards, the tall doors were just nearly impossible to get. I couldn't get a decent gap on them, so the end product was just basically the best I could do. Lastly, I installed the included handles that came with the cupboards. 
leaving us with just a splashback and some fitting upgrades. My other little gripe about these cupboards was the spacing of the doors on once again the tall closet compared to the spacing on the other cupboards which was much more uniform and I just couldn't adjust it any further that was all I could do with the hinges. That winds up this episode of the laundry renovation. Next time we're going to put in an acrylic splashback and upgrade the switch fittings and plug fittings. Anyway, thanks so much for watching guys. I hope you enjoyed it and picked up some tips. Hit that thumbs up button or subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. See you next time.